Hello and welcome. In this video, I will show you how to create a which will display the range column chart. The third chart, child of the column widget, is a chart column 4 class. First, you need to create a chart column 4 class. The child of the chart column 4 is a card widget, which will create a rounded rectangle with a shadow effect. We set the color to a white color, which will define the background color of the card. We set the surface tint color to a white color, which will define the tint color of the card. We set the shape property to a rounded rectangle border widget, which will create rounded corners for the card. The child of the card widget is a padding widget, which will add some space around the content. The child of the padding widget is a column widget. We set the cross axis alignment property to cross axis alignment start, which will align the widgets to the start of the column. The first child of the column widget is a row widget. We set the main axis alignment property to main axis alignment space between, which will align the widgets with equal space between them. We set the cross axis alignment property to cross axis alignment start, which will align the widgets to the start of the row. The children of the row widget are the widgets that display the title and the menu icon. The first child of the row widget is an expanded widget, which will take up the remaining space of the row. The child of the expanded widget is a column widget. The first child of the column widget is a text widget, which will display the word statistic. We set the style of the text widget to have a font size to 28 pixels, a bold font weight and a black color. The second child of the column widget is a text widget, which will display a short description of the data. We set the style of the text widget to have a font size to 16 pixels, a normal font weight, and a gray color. The second child of the row widget is a size box widget, which will create some space between the widgets. The third child of the row widget is a container widget which will display a circular shape with a menu icon. We set the padding property to a constant edge insets widget, which will define the amount of space inside the container. We use a box decoration widget to create a color and a circular shape. The child of the container widget is a SVG picture widget which will display an SVG image from the Assets folder. The second child of the column widget is a sized box widget, which will create some space. The third child of the column widget is a Ceph Cartesian chart widget, which will display the range column chart. To use Ceph Cartesian chart in Flutter, 
we need to add these packages to our pubspec.yaml file, like this. We set the margin property to a constant edge insets widget, which will define the amount of space around the chart. We set the border width property to 0, which will remove the border width of the chart. We set the plot area border width property to 0, which will remove the plot area border width of the chart. We set the primaries axis property to a category axis widget, which will define the x axis of the chart. The is visible property sets whether the x axis is visible or not. The value false means that the x axis is not visible. We set the primary axis property to a numeric axis widget, which will define the y axis of the chart. We set the axis line property to a constant axis line widget, which will define the appearance of the axis line. The major tick lines property sets the major tick lines widget, which defines the appearance of the major tick lines, the small lines that mark the values on the axis. The width property sets the width of the major tick lines to zero, which means that there will be no major tick lines. The major grid lines property sets the major grid lines widget, which defines the appearance of the major grid lines, the lines that run across the plot area at regular intervals. We set the dash array property to a list of doubles, which will define the pattern of dashes and spaces for the grid lines. We set the number format property to a number format widget, which will format the numbers on the axis labels. We set the label style property to a constant textile widget, which will define the appearance of the axis labels. We set the minimum property to zero, which will set the minimum value of the y-axis to 0. We set the maximum property to 8000, which will set the maximum value of the y-axis to 8000. We set the interval property to 2000, which will set the interval between the labels of the y-axis to 2000. The chart column data class is a custom class that defines the data model for the range column chart. The constructor of the class takes four parameters, x, low, high, and color. The x property is a final string that represents the name of the day. The low property is a final double that represents the lower value of the data. The high property is a final double that represents the higher value of the data. The color property is a final color that represents the color of the column. The chart data variable is a final list of chart column data objects that contains the data for the chart. We set the series property to a list of Cartesian series widgets, which will define the data sets of the chart. The only element of the list is a range column series widget, which will display the data as vertical columns with a range of values. We set the border radius property to a border radius widget, which will create rounded corners for the columns. We set the data source property to a constant list of chart column data objects, which will provide the data for the chart. We set the width property to 0.6, which will set the width of the columns to 0.6. We set the X value mapper property to an anonymous function that takes a chart column data object and returns its x property, which will map the x values of the data to the x axis of the chart. We set the high value mapper property to an anonymous function that takes a chart column data object and returns its high property, which will map the high values of the data to the higher end of the columns. We set the low value mapper property to an anonymous function, 
that takes a chart column data object and returns its low property, which will map the low values of the data to the lower end of the columns. We set the point color mapper property to an anonymous function that takes a chart column data object and returns its color property, which will map the color values of the data to the color of the columns. The fourth child of the column widget is a sized box widget, which will create some space. The fifth child of the column widget is a text widget, which will display the words year 2024. We set the style of the text widget to have a gray color. The sixth child of the column widget is a padding widget, which will add some space around the content. The child of the padding widget is a fitted box widget, which will scale the child to fit the available space. The child of the fitted box widget is a wrap widget, which will wrap the child widgets to the next line if there's not enough space. We set the spacing property to zero, which will define the amount of space between the child widgets. The children of the wrap widget are the widgets that display the choice chips. The selected chips variable is a string that stores the value of the selected choice chip. The chips variable is a list of strings that stores the values of the available choice chips. We use the map method to iterate over the chips list and return a choice chip widget for each element. We set the label property to a text widget which will display the category value. We set the label style property to a text style widget, which will define the appearance of the label text. We set the color property to a ternary expression, which will check if the selected chips variable contains the category value and return either colors.white or colors.black accordingly. We set the selected color property to a constant color widget, which will define the color of the chip when it is selected. We set the background color property to a color widget, which will define the color of the chip when it is not selected. We set the show checkmark property to false, which will hide the checkmark icon on the chip. We set the selected property to a Boolean expression, which will check if the selected chip's variable contains the category value and return true or false accordingly. We set the side property to a constant border side widget, which will define the appearance of the border of the chip. We set the shape property to a rounded rectangle border widget, which will create rounded corners for the chip. We set the unselected property to an anonymous function that takes a Boolean parameter, which will be called when the chip is selected or deselected. We use the setState method to update the state of the widget. We use an if statement to check if the chip is selected. If the chip is selected, we assign the category value to the selected chip's variable. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and learned something new. If you did, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. Thank you for watching and see you next time.